Good afternoon, slash good morning, slash good evening, time zone dependent. How are you all doing? Right, let's see if the chat wakes up, unless I've not actually gone live yet. Ooh, I am live. Good. It's good. There we go. So yeah, this um, this stream, it's ended up being slightly premature because uh, as you can see, we're on 29,997 subscribers. So haven't, uh, haven't quite hit it. I thought we would have by now because last night it was on 29,979 when I went to bed. And since I, since I tend to get a lot of views overnight from uh, uh, the Americans, I uh, thought maybe it would reach it, but it hasn't quite, but it will do soon. Oh, no, it's gone down. Um, but yeah, um, so we'll, we'll, keep an eye on, we'll, we'll keep an eye on this just uh, as we get going. Um, for the moment, it does cross the, the big 30K. Uh, I got a bit flustered because a few days ago, um, I ordered a stream deck, like a mini one, and it arrived literally five minutes before the str I was meant to start streaming. So I've just quickly unplugged it. It's a little mini one. It's much smaller than I was expecting. Um, so it, uh, yeah. Oh, 999. Okay, maybe we're going to get to 30 faster. Yeah, I haven't had time to configure it, but I just plugged it in. I think it's charging. It doesn't seem to do anything. Nothing activated when I switched it on, uh, plugged it in. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping that will streamline things a bit more in, in the future. But yeah, ooh, 29999. Maybe we'll get there. I should have said early this morning to make sure it did it first. Set out our call. Just share my channel. Gets 10 people to subscribe. Um, are you doing special one-off liveries? I will be doing special one-off liveries. Um... But yeah, let's wait on this screen for a few minutes. There we go. Ooh, okay. You wait for one bus and three come at once. Right. Yay, there we go. 30,000 subscribers. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. When did I do... Let me think. Uh, I can't remember. What, I think it was about April that I did, got 20,000, wasn't it? Three. Ooh, it keeps going. And then I did my very first stream. That was September 2022. That was for 10,000. So we're averaging about once every eight months, six to eight months. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking 40,000. 40, Mass subscribed on your other accounts. Yes, good. Thank you, Nedzo. That's what you should do. If you have lots of accounts, just subscribe on all of them. You know, get family members to subscribe. Do all of that. Do the same with the DRS Train podcast, of course. We need, we need the, view, the views. Give that a listen or just give it a mass spam of subscribe so we can get that going because we're on about 600 subs. Um, and we do, you know, we've got videos out every week roughly. We've recorded one yesterday. So, yeah. Um, oh, everyone's jumped and got people to subscribe. 3,004. Good. Ah, that's a good benchmark. I, um, I think, uh, yeah, last year my target was to hit 50K, which obviously didn't happen. But, um, uh by the end of the year. I think 50K, if this is a really good year, we could hit 50K by the end of the year. Um, I'd need to just, obviously, the big videos are going to be, you know, the third iceberg, ranking every 80s driver. Um, yeah, ranking every 80s car. Uh, if I can get all of those done in the year. So we'll see if that does it. Um Okay, that's good. Three thousand six. God, that's a that's a big a big push. Okay, so right, this is what we're here for. Uh, been a little while since we've done a tier list, hasn't it? Um, obviously, recently I've been doing a lot of those Google Earth streams on weekends, but yeah, I thought we need to do one of these again. Um, so basically, what I've done here is I've got. I'm not doing every car individually because, for example, the Marlboro Ferrari livery, you can just count that as the same thing from like two thousand up to two thousand six. Um, it doesn't, I mean, if it's the same livery design, but just different sponsor decals, it's not really a different livery. Um, but there are some where it's like, obviously, they have changed the design somewhat. Um, so there's approximately 75 liveries here. Uh, they're arranged alphabetically. I've given each of them a name that roughly matches their description. Um, so uh, 
yeah, we're going to get going with those. And then I've got uh, a folder so we can open each of them up and look at them in closer detail because they're a bit small looking on there, aren't they? Um, one thing I noticed about your ranking videos is the massive amount of details. How does, long does it take you to write and produce the long ranking videos? Um, approximately six weeks. It can take longer if I'm being lazy, but the both the, ni the 90s driver and the 90s car ranking videos both took roughly six weeks end to end. Um, most of that is the script writing. The recording takes a whole afternoon and then cutting that down takes another afternoon. And then it's finding all the pictures and the videos and that can take up to two weeks because um, I can only get realistically, unless it's, uh, it's content is easy to find, I can only get to do, um, uh, I can only do about 10 minutes of, of, of video per day roughly 10 to 15 minutes um, so an hour-long video would take four days to put all the visuals on uh how do you manage to pronounce dutch name so perfectly because i learned dutch i mean not very well i did i did a course on duolingo um and uh and com i did i completed the courses in german and dutch um and so i just got i learned how to pronounce dutch off of that um can this be rewatched later? I need to go to a lecture. Yes, it will be. This will be public after it's ended, just like all my other streams are. Um, so yeah, you'll, you'll see in the next video, there's going to be a lot of uh, Guido van der Garde and that uh, in the next one. Uh, okay, let's get going. Two Panasonic Toyotas. Uh, you'll see why. We'll get to that. Um, okay, so first up is the 2002 pre-season testing arrows. So if we look at this one... Yeah. So obviously Arrows in their last, what, three, four seasons, they had this basic orange. This, they ran this uh, in preseason in 2002 without all the full orange logos and regalia, and it had more of a striped look to it. Um, obviously the proper, the proper orange is a classic, but this, it's, it's a bit blocky, isn't it? We're getting, what are we getting? A B, a C, a B... It's not, I love, obviously, it still has, you know, the orange wheel rims, which I absolutely love. But the, yeah, the rest of it is not highlighting it, highlighting it quite so, so well. Uh, what else are people saying? Yeah, so we've got B, C, B, B, B. Yeah. It's it's not it's not as good as the original, even though the the original is a modern classic. B C. Let me think. Do I want a B or a C? I've only got five. Oh, I didn't put more. Well, the thing is, it gets too specific. So, um, okay, we've only got five tiers to work with. But um, unless I can add, I don't know if I can add more. But whatever. Um, okay, I'll put this as a C. I think as a start. Um, so then the second one, again, these are all pre-season testing ones because it's alphabetical. 2002 pre-season testing Jordan. Um, so that is this one. So Jordan, obviously, we all know that their most iconic livery was the snake livery, which they last used in 2001. Um, and then they brought out a new one in 2002 where it had, they had the DHL sponsorship. But in preseason testing, they ran without any sponsor decals. So it was just this plain yellow with a black base. Um, so B, D, D, C, D, D, D. Yeah, I mean, maybe it just works because it's a classic, but it, it is, it, there's not much to say beyond it's yellow. It's extremely yellow with some black. It's not even like the same shade of yellow that they used to use on the snake one. Maybe it's just the contrast is different, but it's not, it's, it's quite a dull yellow, I guess. Um, we're B, D, D, C, D, 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 E, D. Bad shade of yellow. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think it could be a D. It's a bit plain, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think so. Next up, this is 2002 preseason testing Renault. Um, so again, Renault 2002, it was their first year. Um, they were going to take on obviously the mild seven sponsorship, but they began of, yeah, white with some yellow on the front and along the engine cover. Um, it looks like a cheesecake almost. It's like, a, it's like if, if lemon cheesecake was a formula one car, it would be this. 
Um, but it's I don't really entirely understand why it just looks like that, though, because before this, they were Benetton who had the blue mild seven and then they got the mild seven which obviously had the blue and the yellow together but why just the blue and the white classic renault oh it is of course it is classic renault isn't it yellow sport yellow is renault sport yeah this is like the really ugly the renault what the renault the red the yellow and white they'd use on their sports cars that carried the renault sport decal but what we got anyway you got d b d d c c d c d D, a lot of Ds. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, it could be worse. I mean, I suppose looking, well, actually, if you compare it to the Jordan, um, I think, uh, maybe a C, it could, I think it could go, you could put that in C, I think. Uh, the next one, this is, uh, what is this? 2004 pre-season testing BAR, I think. Uh, end of season testing BAR. Okay. So, yeah, B B BAR did a lot of different liveries um, in 2004, and you'll see some of them later, that they made Anthony Davidson would run them on, um, on Friday practice, and they came up with some really cool things. And so at the end of 2004, they've got this which is just a solid... I think that's Enrique Binaldi driving it, because, yeah, he he was a test driver for BAR after he left Arrows. That's his helmet. And, yeah, so we've got this lovely... It's just a simple black with the stripe... The, like, almost like Adidas stripes on the engine cover and the Lucky Strike logo. I mean, to be honest, you can't go wrong with black and white. Um, except, well, except for in 2024, apparently, when everyone is going wrong with black. I mean, at least this is painted black rather than it just being the base of the chassis. Um, but I like it. It's 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 sport. It's a good sporty look. Again, I guess I'm trying to ignore the car itself, which looks amazing. Um, but we're getting what we're we getting a B, a B, an S, a B, a B, a B, an S, an A, a C, an S. Hmm. I like it. I think it's good. It's not an S because it's a bit too pl plain, but I could put that in A, I think. I think it, I think it's quite quite fetching. Um, so then following that, 2004 pre-season testing Renault. Renault? Red Bull. Um, so this again was after Red Bull took control of uh, Jaguar right at the end of 2004, and so it, they ran this look in pre-season. Uh, where they went a bit more literal in terms of making it look like one of their cans, because we have, compared to the basic livery they've had ever since, there is a lot of silver in this. Um, it's not bad, to be honest. I mean, it's it's different from the kind of standard Red Bull look. Um, a lot of high contrast as well. What are we seeing? A, A, B, B, D, B, C, D, B, C, B, um, C. People are mixed on it. I mean, from my perspective, obviously, this is this is basically a Jag. So this is a colossal downgrade from British Racing Green with gold rims. But it's not... It's all right, but it does look a little bit cheap, I'll be honest. It looks like a kind of stock livery you'd get in one of the F1 games. Um... The white ruins this one. Oh yeah, I can see. You can see there's white on the the sides of the front wing and on the inside of the uh, what are they called? The turning that the front wing, the elements on the side of the front wing. You can see it. Maybe it's just the sunlight gleaming makes it look white. But yeah, uh, it's all right. Um, obviously, Cool Cool helmet has got white, which kind of clashes. But yeah, a lot of people are saying B D C. I'm thinking in the middle. It's a little bit more interesting than these two. So I could throw that in, in there, I think. Um, okay, next up, 2006 pre-season testing Super Aguri. So this one... Um, so this, the basic story here is that when, a, when, um, when uh, Super Aguri formed, they bought 
the Arrows A23 chassis off of Paul Stoddart that he had bought off Arrows and ran as the Minardi PS04, uh, or P which ended up being unraced because they did a modified version of the B-Spec. So this car is literally just the Arrows A23, but with a Honda engine instead of a Cosworth engine. And yeah, they just did a plain, a plain white um, in pre-season testing. And I think, again, it, there's not much to say it's white. There's some black on the floor. But what I think does make a nice contrast is you've got the black on the rear wing with the red Honda logo. I think that's a, a bit of a nice look. Um, so what are we seeing? B, B, C, 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 B. A lot of Cs and Bs. Um, I love the white, the white simple. That's a low C for me, not very inspiring. I mean, yeah, it's it's not exactly inventive, but it does actually work. That's the thing. And yeah, the bridge, it's crazy that like it is, the Bridgestone branding works. So yeah, it does actually kind of work. That's the funny thing. Um, so maybe just put it in the middle. Yeah. I do feel like I need more options of tiers here, but I'm not sure how to do that without fucking everything up. Um because I know you can add images, but I don't know if this thing is going to let me add more tiers, but whatever, it doesn't matter. I thought otherwise we'd end up with just too many of them. Um, next up, that is, uh, what would that be? 2007 pre-season testing Honda. 2007 end of season testing Honda. Okay. Uh, apologies for the potato quality. So again, this was run, well, technically this was actually January 2008, and that's Verts? No, that's not Alex Verts driving it. So this is Honda's 2007 car, but they ran it, they were still testing it January 2008, but they just used white. You can click on the gears on the left-hand side to, uh, to of each tier to add or subtract tiers. Ooh, does that... Ooh! Ooh, that's good. Maybe I can do that. Um, add row below. Interesting. Yay. I mean, I, the color needs to be different. How do I make that more? What, what, what color am I looking for to make it? No, I need more green. Red to green to a bolder green. A, B, C, D. Yeah. Okay. Well, now we have... Okay. Well, for the time being, we've got, we've got the option of an E. Uh, so for some of the others, but maybe we can revise some of those. But anyway, let's go back to this one. Yeah, plain white, again, potato quality picture, so which doesn't help. But yeah, compared to the Super Aguri, this doesn't actually work that well. That's the thing. Um, so maybe just put this one like a step below the Super Aguri. So maybe put this one... A lot of people are saying DD blue is an F, E, the perfect benchmark for E, A, D. It's the worst version of the SA. Um, let's go in D for the time being. Um, maybe I should add F just because why not? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's add F. Um, let's add row below with the blue. Okay. So now we've got two tiers. Uh, okay. So actually let's, let's, now that I think about it, let's revisit a couple of these and think if they, if there should be, they should go lower. Um, so if I go back. Do we want, uh, now that we have the option, let's go back to the first one. Just very quick, cover these quickly. Does this need to go up or down, do we think? Because we've got that on C, it's just in the middle. I think it's okay. Um, but what, what does everyone else think? I'm Stay, keep, keep. I'm seeing a lot of keeps. Okay, we can, we can keep this one in, in C. Um, so then we've got the preseason Jordan, which at the moment is in D. It's just a plain yellow. I think this one needs to go down. I don't think it's an F tier livery, but I think we can move we can move the Jordan down to E. Um, after that, we have uh, the the Renault again, the cheesecake, the lemon cheesecake Renault, which I put in C, which now looks really really generous. F E E F. Um, it's not quite... Mm, maybe it is an F. Yeah, let's, let's just put it C, E. No, let's go in E for that one. Um, then, what was the next one? Uh, the black Honda. This is good. Or the black BAR even. This is actually really nice looking at it again. I think that can stay in A, to be honest. I like this one. What does everyone else think? 
That's a lot of Fs. I think that's for the um, still for the, the other one. Stay. Uh, keep, stay, stay. Yeah, everyone's saying stay, so that one's fine. Uh, then the Red Bull, which at the moment is in B. What are we thinking? Does, should this stay in B? Does it need to go up? Does it need to go down? Stay, stay. Um, C, C. Drop one, C. Stay for Red Bull. Maybe to C. Okay, I'm seeing more Cs than stays, so we can put the, the Red Bull down to a C. Uh, then what was it next? It was the Super Aguri, the preseason testing Super Aguri. Just the plain whites, which at the moment is in B. Um, does this need to go down, do we think? F. Keep F. C. C. Keep C, C. Everyone, so, so I've got keep C and F. Oh, God, let's just go to C. We need. I, I guess I need to try and think within the perspective of um, future liveries because I tend to have to change rankings. So this, we'll move this down one. Um, and then we had the Honda, the white, the white Honda, which at the moment is in D. And yeah, I think that needs to go down further. So white Honda, E or F, E E F, F, E, E. F. All I can think of is that that Lord Farquaad meme E. Um, F F F E. Now uh, just put it in E. Um, was that the last one we did? Oh, that was the last one we did. Okay, okay. So we got these sorted. So this is the next one. This is 2007 pre-season pre-season testing Honda. So they went from ending 2007 with a white car. They began 2007 with this black. Again, it's it's just a not. It's nice and sleek, isn't it? Um, it's like the 98 arrows, the, yeah, the 98 arrows that just had the all black. And again, it's very much like the BAR, the BAR we saw, but it doesn't have as much going on. Just a bit less interesting. So the if we compare it to the BAR, and the BAR is in A, this is not as interesting as that um, at all. That's B, 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 couple of Cs, doesn't work as well as that. Very solid B. That is black done well. B, B. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'll put this down one step further from the, the uh, BAR version. So then after this, uh, 2007 preseason testing Renault. So this one, again, the story here is that up until 2006, uh, Renault had their Mild 7 sponsorship. And then from 2007, they had ING as their main sponsor. But they had to, um, the contracts didn't quite overlap over pre-season testing. So they ran this look, but without a kind of a kind of middle way between Mild 7 and, R and ING. And yeah, this is this is literally the cheesecake Renault, but blue instead of white. It's quite It's quite nice. It's an interesting shade of blue, actually. Um, very shiny. I love that shade of blue. Looks like the 99 BAR. Congrats on 30k. Da thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Dan's one of our regulars on the DRS Train podcast. So if you want to hear him, you know, tune into the podcast. Um, that's a B for me. I like the shade of blue. Solid BB. Nice shade of blue. Dark blue doesn't work as well as the normal livery. Yeah, it's good. It's a nice. Yeah, it's so it's nice and shiny, isn't it? Um, it's got nothing on the miles, on the proper Mile 7 one. Renault E dams. It does kind of look like a... Um, it does kind of look like a... Bleh, Formula E design, doesn't it? Um, uh, yeah, everyone's saying B. So, yeah, let's throw this in B. Next up. 2007 pre-season testing Spiker. So, Spiker took over from Midland. And then in pre-season, they ran this basically kind of blinding fluorescent high-vis orange. And then when it came to the actual races, they're like, I think we need to tone this down a bit. So they made it a bit less, you know, psychedelic. But yeah, it was like glowing bright orange in the sun. Um, but, it, you know, it's quite... They've got the gunmetal grey. So it's, it's got the classic spiker looks. You've got the, the green with the super fund. It's very fluorescent. So we've got an F, an A, an A, a D, an S... An A, S, B, D. Everyone's got everything. I don't know which one to choose. Um, uh, 
Oh, well, this is easy. Everyone's picked every single option. Um, a, E, A, B, B, A, B, C, B, A, S, D, A, B. Uh, I think it's... Well, the thing is, it, from this angle, it's nice, but then it, it is a bit It is a bit much when from different angles. It's quite... Uh, it's, it's different to have something glowing that much. Uh, B, G... <laughs> I think a B, maybe a B is a good one for that one. Um, so then uh, after that, what do we have? 2008 pre-season testing Force India. So this is actually the same car. Um, so Force it Spiker. So Force India in their first year in 08, they just used the Spiker. So in pre-season testing, they had the white with the gold, this really lovely like m scarlet red maroon thing going on before they had their standard livery. I mean, this is really nice, actually. I'm not sure, is that Satil's helmet? Because I know that Ralph Schumacher did a test in this car trying to get a seat and that didn't happen. They've got AAA, BBA, Smash. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that could be a tier. High B, low A. Can you use the poll tool of YouTube streams does not allow for another option? Um, I could. Well, I didn't know that was a thing, but I don't know how to do... Well, doing that whilst doing this would... Whilst trying to do everything else might be tricky. I'll look into that for the next one, see how that would work. Because if it means changing screens constantly, it would just be awkward. Um, love the preseason forcing the top tier, fancy as hell. Kingfisher colours, A... B, blood, it's bloody awful. Everyone's got very different views on this. Satil would smash Lewis in that car. C, A, HRT 2012. It does have a little bit of HRT, actually, yeah. There is a little bit of that going on. Hey, Peter. Hello, Kieran. Kieran Large. Hello. Thank you for tuning in. B, C, A, B, A. Uh, I quite like it. It's not, it's not S tier. I like this. Let's put this in A. Um, actually, just check. How is the... Okay, we are, ooh, ooh, we're up to nine. Good, quite a burst in subscribers. Uh, anyway, after that, 2008 pre-season testing Williams, another black livery. Um, and it's it's Nico Hulkenberg driving it, who at the time was their test driver. Um, so again, pre-season testing 2008, they just have this plain black, but we've got these, we got this stripey thing going on on the nose. There's the Petrobus, the Lenovo, there's all of that going on. It's another black one. Um, so what we're we seeing, A, A, C, A, F, D, D, C minus D, B, B, D, C, F, C, E, C. Oh, again, it, <laughs> this one's dividing people, isn't it? Board of black. There are there is a lot of black. I mean, we we've we've got a lot of black this year, and it seems like there was a lot of it going on last year. Maybe that's what's happened. Maybe the reason all the cars are black is actually no. This is just our testing livery, and you know, come Bahrain in a few weeks, they're all going to be bright colours, bright plumage, like a peacock or something. Um, okay, but yeah. So this is black. So if we compare this to the other black liveries we've got, it's not quite. It's not as good as the BAR. It's basically the same as the, the Honda um, one, I guess. Uh, C, 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 E, C. Maybe it's a little bit worse, actually. Let's put it, let's put it back to C. Uh, okay. 2009, 2009 pre-season testing, we did another black one. So yeah, pre-season testing, and it's Holkenberg again. Um, I was going to say, oh, we've got this little, like, blue and white thing going on here, but then I've noticed that's just a reflection of the pit, the, the, the ground. Another black one. RBS, Philips, we got that. The stripey thingies on the nose have gone. Um, it's a shinier black. It's like a, it's like a blacker black. Um, I wish they had glitty rainbows and gold and pink and obnoxious colours like the 1990 LaRousse livery, which is underrated. Yeah, they just need to make them brighter. Just something interesting. I mean, I suppose Alpha, what, not they're not Alpha, Sauber, whatever they're called now. They've gone for something with that bright green stripes, even if it is a bit basic. It's like, well, it's it will stand out compared to everything else being very, very dark. Um, so, yeah, oh, it's another black one. It's basically the same as the year before. Although actually it's marginal, to be honest, that is marginally better. But when you've got C, B, E, C, uh, 
I think this could just creep into B, maybe. Um, but yeah. What's next? Oh, okay. So we're off the preseason testing ones. Anthony Davidson, BAR. So as I explained before, uh, BAR, when they ran their third driver in 2004, which was Anthony Davidson, they let him... Uh, they let him do these special one-off liveries in Friday practice. And so they did this one. And you'll notice that it has his face on the side of the engine cover and like his, his like helmet design going on. And they've put like graffiti. I mean, this one is odd because it looks like a car that's been left in some dodgy part of town and, and some, some, some teenagers have got a hand of it and just graffitied it. That's what it looks like. Um, Oh, Wimbo, thank you for the six dollars. Is that dollars? Euros? Six euros. Thank you very thank you very much, Wimbo. Check out Wimbo's channel as well. He makes some good stuff. Um So what we got? A A C S A S. This looks like an average Eastern European wall. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's been left in like some dodgy part of Warsaw or Krakow or something, and the local Yobos have just got their hands on it with the spray paint. Um but we're getting a lot of people are positive B A B C B. But the Berlin Old Wall, yeah, Berlin Wall B A R. That's what this one could be. S. Neva Speed. Oh God, it, it is like Neva Speed Underground, isn't it? Actually, it's got. Well, you can tell it's of that time because this were this 2004. This was around the time that you know everyone was doing their import tuner. I played a lot of Neva Speed Underground and Neva Speed Most Wanted back in the day. I loved you know chaving up Ford Fiestas and that. Yeah. That was my jam. Uh, I don't think it's quite an S. I mean, it, it gets an A star for originality, but I, I let's put it in A just because it looks it's like nothing like anything else we've seen. The graffiti is quite a cool addition. Um, okay, now we've got something a bit less one off. Barcode Ferrari. So this is the, this is the Ferrari livery from two thousand seven to two thousand and nine after they lost Marlborough. And, you know, it's the basic, you know, Rosso Corsa Ferrari red, but we've got this like barcode thing going on on the top, on the top and on the, the rear wing. Um, and that's Luca Badawa driving it. So we've got A-A-A-S-S-A-S. -S -S. I mean, obviously every Ferrari livery more or less is iconic and amazing. This one, it just doesn't quite land in the same way as the Marlboro one that preceded it. Um, C, a couple of Cs. Uh, if that Gopnik art project got A, this should at least be A. That's an A for me because of the, the shade of red they used. A otherwise feels corporate B. Yeah, it is good. It's just not quite... I, I think I think they have done better in the past and even today because we obviously we had the launch this morning. Weren't they supposed to drive the car? Maybe I've missed it. Weren't they supposed to drive the car like they did last year? But they just put up some two-minute video. Um... A, C, I think A is, is a good one for this. Um, God, we're rattling through this quickly. We've only been 30 minutes and we've already done 4, 8, 12, 15. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Next, uh, Bleu Royal Prost. So the Royal Blue Prost that they had throughout their entire time. I mean, yeah, this is a, abs this is a lovely shade of blue. Really deep shiny good blue i mean this car is the one that had yahoo i think this is their last one whereas before when they had the playstation 2 decals it's like oh it's just so of the time um i'm late to the moment but congrats on 30k thank you allison thank you very much the yahoo is actually a signature of the artist nice prost you actually it does have the playstation on the um the barge boards but you can only see the play in this picture it's simple but super effective i think it's just a really, really lovely shade of blue. And again, it's like um, the, Cry the, Dodge the Chrysler Vipers and Dodge Vipers that were used in like WEC or GT Racing that had the same Bleu Royale, or however you're meant to say it. I'm sure Nav will correct me at some point. Um, look, the French government backed F1 team. Yeah, uh, it's nice. It's not an S, but it, God, it looks good. It's, a it's just a really, really good shade of blue with a little bit of black on the wing, on the front and rear wings too. And Galois's classic French, French sponsor, PlayStation around the helmet. I mean, I don't know which driver that is because their helmets look the same. But we're seeing A, C, B, A, B, A or B. 
very underrated livery. I think an A. Yeah, I like this one. We can be, we can be nice to that one. Um, <clears throat> okay, now we got one of the big boys, BMW Sauber. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like they they had this for yeah for what four years in a row, oh six to oh nine. I mean, the BMW sm Motorsport look is so good. Just the white, the really again the really deep blue and the red stripe. And the, the BMW logo at the front. It, it is just amazing. And it had the really sporty rims too. Yeah. I mean, obviously it helps with this, but this is the 08 car, which is probably has probably the most, probably the most aerodynamically intricate Formula One car ever made. I mean, look, it's got the, it's got the bull horns. It's got everything, all this stuff going on all over it. SS. It still looks modern now. That's the thing about like cars, F1 fast and 20 years ago, they don't look or even feel dated because they have this lovely sleek lines. They sound fast and they're, as, they're basically as fast as the modern cars. They don't look old. The ones, the 2010 to 2013 ones, they do kind of look old because they've got this very boxy look and the very high nose um, compared to the modern cars, definitely. But yeah, this is just brilliant, isn't it? Um, I think we've got, I think we've got our first S. I mean, yeah, if BMW come back to F1, I mean, I, I mean, obviously this was basically BMW, but I want like proper BMW where it's just, it's all them and it's all in Munich where their factory is rather than, you know, leeching off Sauber in Hinville. But yeah, they, they, we, I, pro, if we had like full on proper big BMW, they'd come back with this livery and yeah, we'd be amazing. Uh, next up, BMW Williams. So again, this is the livery that Williams had from 2001 to 2005 before they went over to Sauber. Um, I mean, there were different sponsors. This is the HP Invent one from 2005. But again, another another fantastic livery with the um, the the white with the navy blue. It really it does it does work very very nicely. Um, and they were some really good cars. Again, this one, like it's shiny. It's got sleek lines. Those really sporty wheel rims. It just looks mean. It's just a good car, and it's a good look. Um, but most people are saying A. I'm lining. I'm thinking S to be honest. But like C, this looks like the driver is in a business suit. Yeah, it. it, it <laughs> I see what you mean. It, it is very kind of executive in how it looks, isn't it? But um, it's a brilliant one, and it's just iconic because it's. I think the cars that were and the drivers they had are what made it to have Ralph and Juan together in some really powerful cars. So I'm thinking I'm thinking we can do another S for this one. We can be nice to we can stand BMW. Uh oh yes. British Racing Green Jag. As a kid, I absolutely love this. So I, I, I mean I, I wasn't really watching F1 much in the early 2000s. I knew what it was and I knew the names of the big drivers. When I did watch races, I always saw Irvine and I knew he drove this car and I would support him just because I loved it. And I love the toy cars you could get, the Jag. It's just such a good shade of green, like a hundred times better than what Aston Martin have done. And the gold rims as well. And the Bex HS, it's just, oh, it's just, it's just done right. The Jag, oh, like the, the Jag on the engine cover. It's just, everything is done right with this. And it's one of those, it's one of those ones that like makes the era. This is what, as a kid, made it so easy to recognize the cars because you, I, as a kid, I knew, oh, we've got the red team, Ferrari. We've got the orange team, Arrows. Jordan is yellow. BAR is white, you know, and Jag, Jag is green. Like we all, you could recognize everyone so easily. It's just, yeah, it's, it, this one slaps. Like that, that's an S. Um, and then... Oh, Chrome McLaren, 2006. So this is like the trans. So this one is the transitional period between Western McLaren and then the full-on Vodafone McLaren. So this one again, I differentiated from the Vodafone one because it's no, there's no Vodafone. It's got the Johnny Walker on the side, the black, really, really deep chrome reflective silver. Another brilliant one. Yeah. Everyone's going A, S, S. We got some good ones coming up. Yeah, I love this one. I mean, the car itself was just not quite good enough to challenge Ferrari and um, Ferrari and Renault. But yeah, amazing. Like proper, proper silver. This one, I, uh, what I really do like, you can't see it very well in this picture. It's the black Johnny Walker because the way it blends in, it looks like it's been spray painted on. 
And even the black wheels kind of work too. Wasn't this one a Ferrari? Oh no, that was the next one. Um, this is the 06 car. So that's another S. Uh, then we're going back a bit. Compaq Williams. So this is the 2001. This is the livery from 2000 before. They had BMW, but it's before they took on the, the sort of BMW design. So it's still predominantly white with a darker blue in a different pattern. Um, yeah. This one, it's good. It's good. It's not quite as good as what they, they've also done. But we're seeing A, B, B, C, D, A... A, B, C, a couple of years later. Yeah, it just doesn't... It's not quite... I, I think the thing is, the year 2000, the cars themselves, in terms of their... I don't think they looked as good because they were a bit boxy before they started going for the, like, low nose design and adding all, all these fins and everything. Um, It's all right. It's not bad. Yeah, a lot of people are saying B. I think I agree with them that this is a B. Um... Yeah, let's put that in B. Okay. Credit Suisse Sauber. So explanation for this one, again, is that basically 1995, uh, Sauber took on Red Bull as their sponsor, their, who purchased a 60% stake for the next 10 years. But then in 2001, they signed Kimi Raikkonen, which made Red Bull very angry because they wanted the seat to go to Enrique Bernaldi, who they, they were backing in um, Formula Rent 3000. He went to Arrows. Red Bull sold their stake in Sauber to Credit Suisse and became a minor sponsor. So we kept the Red Bull, the we kept the Red Bull logo until the end of two thousand and four. But yeah, so anyway, we got a lot going on here. I mean, we've got two different shades of blue: the like icy kind of aqua with the deep navy, and then we got the yellow and the white on the nose. There is a there is quite a lot going on here. Um. Is, this is not Pedro de Nizera. This is post... So this is 2001 to 2004. Um, and I think that's Massa. Is that, no, that's Fizzy Keller's helmet, I think. Um, there is quite a lot going on, let's be honest. And so we're getting some Cs, some Bs, some Bs, some S, some A, some D, D, D. Um, like, there's a lot going on, but it works in the sense that it, it it's high contrast and it stands out, I think. that's It has... It looks like toothpaste, like if it, we've gone from that Renault that if cheat if lemon cheesecake was a Formula One car, this is if a toothpaste tube was a Formula One car. Um, I quite like it to be honest, and it's because it's got it's kind of suggesting Red Bull with the logo and the yellow the yellow engine cover. Uh, what are we doing with this one? Uh, I think mm, maybe let's go for B. A lot of set E A a few Ds. Yeah, I think I think a B might be good. Okay, next up, Dark Knight Toyota. Okay, so this one is ba is the basic um, Panasonic Toyota red and white that they had throughout their entire time in F1. But at the British Grand Prix in 2008, to promote the, the release of the Dark Knight, they put the bat symbol on here and on the sides. And that's quite a nice touch, actually. I mean, the base livery, we've already... They've done the sort of street look on the red, which is pretty neat. Um, where it looks like it's the paint's been kind of stripped off, and then we got these, yeah, on the turning on the um, the tur the turning vanes and on the sides of the rear wing, we got the bat symbol. Um, so what are we thinking? B B E B B C B B. Um, Britain 08 was Dark Knight. Yeah, 2008 British Grand Prix. Yeah, it doesn't work somehow. C C B C C B. Um, it looks like they forgot to remove the aero paint. Yeah. I do quite like it, I think, but it's it's obviously only a little bit different from the original livery. A lot of people are saying C, B. Uh, I feel like a B is, is generous, maybe, for that, for that one. Um, yeah. Subtle, but, you know, it kind of works. Okay, so then we've got Don't Walk B.A.R. So I did this one. So this is basically 2003, roughly, to 2005. So I had, I had to distinguish from the original Lucky Strike B.A.R., which was like an all-white and silver, because later on we had we had the red circle and we had the black thrown in too. Uh, 
I mean, I love the, the way they've integrated because the black circle, obviously, it suggests that the Japanese flag, again, really, really good look. I love that on the back of the rear wing, it just says don't walk. I don't know why it says that, but it just looks cool. Um, but what are we thinking? A-A-S-C, A-A-S, high C. Yeah, it is a good look. I don't think it's quite an S, though. But I like, yeah, I like the use of black along the base of it. And, the, and around the around around the um, the cockpit too works. Uh, this it has a sort of digicam almost look with a broken circle because normally that's just a plain black circle. Um, yeah, let's put that in A. I'm getting through these very quickly, but well, we've been going for about forty five minutes, so you know, doesn't have to be the most longest stream in the world. Okay. Goodness me, Earth Dreams Honda. So the second of the two Earth Dreams looks, um, 2008. I'm personally not really a fan of this one because we've got, okay, so we've got, you know, the, the white as a base and then they've got the Earth Dreams. They've got the Earth, although I, I, I can't quite tell what's where. I'm trying to look at that. I think it's been inverted. Is that the Red Sea or that's... Oh, no, 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 that's... Um, that's the Arabian. That's the Arabian Peninsula. That's the the Persian Gulf. And so then that's going to be up along the Levant. It just yeah. It, that's the thing. It doesn't look like anything. Um, nowhere near as bad as the previous year. D, but it's better than 07. Better than 07. D D E D F. Um, I I mean again, this is not the livery. I do love this whole stepped barge board thing. That is kind of cool. And they've got the again. They've got the like bull horn type thing going on the nose but again that's not the livery they put the earth thing on the wheel covers which is i guess a bit of a touch Z, yeah d d i'm not um because we've been very generous nobody's been in d actually so let's throw this in d um okay european aviation minardi so the 2001 look uh, when Paul Stoddart took over the team and then European Aviation became the main sponsor and they took on those, I think they were Cosworth engines rebranded as Europeans. So again, black. Um, the thing is, it does look, it looks like a 90s livery because we've got this black and then we've got this like PDP. I mean, it looks like the Simtech with the MTB with the purple and blue. Um, yeah, that's the thing. It's black with a, a bunch of, I mean, that, what is that? The Foth Estate with the orange, like the, the liveries, you could tell they were desperate for sponsors because the liveries just don't, the, the, the decals just don't fit anywhere. That's the problem. Um, yeah, I'm not, not a huge fan. Um, if we compare this to the other black liveries, they're all A, two in B, one in C. Uh, everyone else is saying D, E, D, E, Z, D, it looks moldy, D, F. Maybe my chat hasn't updated because I'm only seeing a few people. Uh, D, F. Um... Hmm. My chat stopped. It likes to do this. Let's uh, reopen it and see if it'll update itself. C, C. Oh, we got it again. Solid B, C, C, D, C. Ooh, people are being more generous with this one. Uh, C. Hey, it's me. Hello, jo Joe Baker. Uh, C, D, uh, okay, this is the lower end of the black looks, so I think we'll put this in maybe C. Um, next up, Hamley's Williams. Uh, this is the 2008 Williams look. So again, this one was, they had changed things because the 07, they, they put the, this on the, the nose comb was different. So we got this white with this really, really dark blue, a really, really deep blue. I think it's quite nice. It's it's a good it's a good look. Again, it is very because of the RBS as well. It is a very executive look, um, a very a very business kind of financial look. Um, like something you see designed on The Apprentice or something. Um, B B B C D A B. Uh, the green stripes on the front make it look like a go kart. Maybe you're mentioning the Minardi. I don't see any green stripes on this one. I like it. It's not bad, is it? 
it's kind of hovering between A and B. Um, but what we got B, B, C, D, A, B, 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 C, C. Maybe it should go in B. I think that's a fair one. Um, what's next? ING Renault. So this is Renault 07 to 09. Um, uh, there were some very minor changes. I mean, they did take... Obviously, 2009, there was a bit less blue going on at the front. 2007, there was a bit more blue going on the front. But generally, we got... Yeah, we got the yellow with the orange with the white. The ING. That I like the way that looks. Obviously, it's, the shark fin kind of facilitates it. I, like, I love the shade of blue. The front wing, I like. That's a good look. But everyone else is going C C disgusting. Someone's put nice C A B D A or B um, S. It's grown on over time. This is the thing. It is quite good. Maybe it's been made to look good by some modern ones. I don't know. D D might be controversial, but it's S for me because it's a really nice looking car. It is a nice looking car. I like like everyone turns their nose up at like shark fins, but I think it makes the cars look kind of sporty. It has like a, it makes it, it gives it this really aggressive front end. Um, see, Fernando's, this car is Fernando's first car. Okay, you must be behind, you must be looking at the Minardi. Um, needs its own tier at the bottom, crash gate, C, B, B, C. This one is dividing people a lot, isn't it? Um, a lot of C's. It's leaning mostly on C. The thing is, I quite like it too. I put it in B. I'll give it a bit of a bump up. Um, right, Kingfisher Force India. So in the 90s, in the 2000s, this was only used in 2009, but obviously they kept this basic livery until 2013. Yeah, it's the Kingfisher look. The white, the green, the orange... I think it's nice. Again, very bold, stands out immediately. And not that it's relevant to this, but it has the nostalgia of being one of the teams in the one of the, the midfield teams, the V8 Diffuser era that really stood out. The White and McKay, again, that's a good that's a good addition. The Kingfisher looks good. We've got A A B A A A B A A S B C D. M mid B. I think it's, I mean, this car is ugly as hell, but the livery is nice. Um, brings up the vibrancy of the Indian flag. A, A, B, D, B. If only it had Kurz, Spa 2009, Peter knows. Yeah, maybe they, maybe he could have won back when, you know, only like two teams had Kurz. The orange, green and white shows India, B, B, S. Yeah, I like it. It's very, it's very bold. It stands out. Let's put this in A. Yeah. Has a lot going for it. Uh, so then we have KL Minardi. So this is the 2002 Minardi. So it's the same basic um, livery as the European one the year before. But the thing is, it has the KL on the side uh, and the red, the big red stripes, Asia Tech. You can tell this is an Alex Young car, even though that's Mark Webber driving it. The KL, I'm assuming, is something to do with Kuala Lumpur. Another black car. Um, so F, B, A, C, F, F, D, A, B, C, um, D, D. Yeah, the, I suppose with this one, I don't like that KL. It's like a sort of vomit yellow or orange. This one, if you compare this to the other be, the other black liveries, I think this is worse than the previous one. This, again, the sponsors are just very out of place. And it shows in their sort of desperation to get money, Minardi. Um, so I'm not such a fan of this one. It looks like it, it's a livery from like 10 years earlier. Um, so where's the other one? I put that one there. Let's put this in D, I think. Mm. Okay, then we have the Lenovo Williams. So this is the 2007 Williams. Again, it's kind of almost like toothpaste. This one was different enough in the year after because the pre predominantly white nose cone and front of the car. But we've got that going on. We've got this light blue stripe, the, the dark blue. Again, it is very executive, but it does have a sort of toothpaste look as well. Um, 
B S B A A A B A A. The light blue looks great. A it it is it is very from the front. It is because it's it's good because this is the nose is not really like a full white. It's like a slightly grayish white as well, which gives it this sort of more metallic kind of or, or, or no, more more plasticky sort of look. It's like a toy F one car. Um, but again, it's good touch here. Blue, there's I mean there's a lot of blue at the back half, but we're seeing B B C C A C A. Um Where's the 08? Where did I put the 08 one? I put the 08 one in B. If we compare it to that, it's a similar, yeah. Hmm. Maybe a B. Yeah. I think so. Uh next up. Uh, Lucky Strike BAR. So this is the look that they had from 2000 up to 2003, 2002, 2003. So it was, the base look was just a white, but with the big Lucky Strikes on the side. And they've got this like golden red thingy going along the side of the cockpit. Yeah, base white with a lot of red. I mean, Lucky Strike, that is booze, isn't it? Or is that those cigarettes? Because this is before they banned all of that stuff. So I think that that game, if it's one of those, that gains points because I think if we're going to have these fucking crypto gambling bullshit, we should be allowed to have tobacco and booze back. Um, a A B A B C S S B. Yeah, the thing is, it is just, obviously, base white often works. I mean, the Stuart look good. This just doesn't land in quite the same way. I think there's almost too much contrast because it has the black wheels as well. And the black floor, um, it's not It's not the best. You can see where they're coming from. It just hasn't been executed fully. It's tobacco. Yeah, lucky strike. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so... Let's put this in C. Just basically, we have OnlyFans and Pornhub are part of the Tinos. Uh, well, it's not going to be. It wouldn't. But there are drivers sponsored by Pornhub, aren't there? There's someone in NASCAR, I think, that is. Not Pornhub, OnlyFans. It wouldn't surprise me if the, if someone takes that a drive. There, there'll be an F1 driver that takes that on as a sponsor. And then guess what their sponsorship duties are. Um, <laughs> Okay, and then we have Lucky Strike Honda. So to be honest, this is the same as the BAR one, but this is the 2006 Honda. So I guess it is effectively the same as the, the BAR, but it's just a different team technically. So that's why it's different. Um, although to be honest, it doesn't have the broken up circle. So it's the plane. It's just a full red circle. It says Honda there. Yeah, we got a little bit. Again, the Lucky Strike, we've, got, we've still got that gold and black thing going on here. A bit less black on there. Um, a A A A A B C A A. You can get the Anthony Davidson helmet in the games. Yeah, they always offer this as a bonus one. And to be honest, it's a good helmet. I mean, it's a hundred times easier to, to to recognize than some of the modern ones. It helps. It doesn't help that this year everyone now everyone changes their helmet every single race. Um, it's the 06 winning. Yeah, yeah. This is the car that Button won in 2006. Uh, okay, so this is effectively the same as the other BAR one, which I put there. So I think, yeah, on that basis, that goes in A. And then, oh, yes, Marlboro Ferrari. I mean, it helps that someone's added some shiny thingy on there. But no, this is, this is an instant classic. It's such a bright, bold red that stands out immediately. And the Vodafone, the white... And the white rims and oh yeah, the big big ass Marlboro on the side. And again, it's it's this it's what it symbolizes. It symbolizes Schumacher's dominance and the cars driving around Monza and just the sleek looks and again the toy cars that you could get as a kid, the little like Hot Wheels ones. It's just oh such such an S. Um Then we've got Midland. Uh, so Midland, this one. So we've got we've got white, we've got gunmetal grey, and we've got this sort of orangey, ready, quite ugly thing going on. Um, again, this looks a bit. It looks a bit executive. It looks like it should be a livery for like a British touring car or a DTM car rather than a Formula One car. Um, it's 
and it looks like something out of a game, but it's an interesting... I mean, the gunmetal is quite... Because it's shiny grey, it's kind of good looking. But again, it has this very executive look to it. Um, S for Ferrari, A-A-E-C-A-C-C. -C. Um, looks like a McLaren from memory. Yeah, it has a bit of Vodafone McLaren, a bit of HRT in there too. Uh, D, it always looks like a My Career livery. Yeah, it does. It, lo it looks like a stock livery you'd get in one of the games, doesn't it? Um, it could be worse, to be honest, but it's still not quite there. Um, it was only, obviously it, it's unique because it was a one-off. We only saw it once, but we're getting some D, some B, A, C, D, D. It's yeah, okay. So the, the fluorescent version was B. Well, that's a spiker actually, or, but whatever. Next year's car. Uh, maybe let's just put this in C. I think. But yeah, Midland are one of those funny one-off teams that aren't really remembered that well. I mean, even in, I, I, a couple of years ago, I did a video on them, again, covering their season in excruciating detail, and there's just nothing interesting happened, to be honest. Um, two very uninteresting drivers in Christian Albers and Tiago Montero as well. Right, okay. Mild 7 Benetton. So Benetton ran up until the end of 2001, and they had this Mild 7. Again, nice, bright, bold blue with the big-ass Mild 7 on the engine cover. Um, okay, so yeah, big Mild 7. There's a dark blue here for some reason, which is a bit strange. I don't mind the white on the front wing end plates. That Vodafone square there is a bit off. Korean Air is kind of cool. PlayStation 2, that dates it, but dates it really nicely. That just, yeah, reminds you of the time. Takes you back. And the white... Yeah, at least it's it's a it's a nice it's a good shade of blue, but there's not much else going on really, is there? So A B A B B B B C D C. Uh, let's look at this in context. Uh, it's not bad to be honest, is it? If you um, we got a lot of the black ones here. E C D C. A. I think I could be generous and put it in B. Yeah. Okay, so we go from Mild 7 Benetton to Mild 7 Renault. Yep. Oh, amazing. Just, just absolutely amazing. Bright, bright blue, yellow with the dark blue highlights. A little bit of red at the front. Like the flowers, the Renault logo. It's just, it, there's a lot going on, but it works, doesn't it? Like, it's, there, there are so many sponsors. Mild 7, Mild 7, Chromatech, Mild 7 again. We got enough Mild 7. Renault, Elf, Telefonica back on the rear wing. Front, the flower for some reason. Yeah, and there's this weird patterny thing going on the nose. Little red stripe, red engine cover. Yeah, and also Alonso's helmet matches it perfectly. So it's an S, yeah. Um, what's after that? My Earth Dreams Honda, the 2007 Honda. Okay, now, people rag on this, but I think this is absolutely stunning. Like, I love this. It is so different. It, 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 I love the idea that it is the Earth, because obviously they had no tech... They didn't have any technical sponsors. But you can see... The thing is, it's the blue marble, and you can see the Earth in such huge detail. I mean, it's... Obviously, the scale's a bit off, but what? Because over here, this looks like Siberia and Kamchatka. There's China, I think. There's South, yeah, Southeast Asia, and then we've got Caspian Sea, Black Sea, Africa, Europe, Britain, probably America up around that way. I actually really like this, and it's the contrast with the black from that really bl bright blue, and the front, it's a good shade of blue. It shines up really nicely. I mean, the car was a dog, but loads of people hate this. But I think it looks I think it looks amazing because it's so different. We've never seen anything like this, and because it's so asymmetrical as well. But a lot of people are going F. Some A's cleanly done. A A. It's beautiful. It is. It is. It's very nice, isn't it? I like. I love the look of the clouds. It's yeah. 
I'm not even sure what the My Earth Dreams thing was about, if it was to do with environmental awareness or whatever, but it, it lasted for two years and then they just, well, yeah, stopped when Honda stopped. ZS. Um, yeah, I don't, I, well, I don't won't quite put an S. I'm going to put in A. I think it's, yeah, I love it because it's so unique. Okay, next up, Ocean's 12 Jaguar, complete with diamond. Um, so again, so the basic story behind this is that 2004 Monaco Grand Prix, um, it's the release of Ocean's 12. And so Jaguar run this special livery where they have the red nose and they change the front wing and the, the engine covers a bit more red. And they put these, these Steinmetz diamonds in the nose cone, which were uninsured. And then Christian Cleon, he crashed at um, the uh, Nouvelle, no, the Lowe's hairpin on the first lap and the nose cone came off. And then when they recovered it at the end of the race, the diamond was gone. So what people think is that maybe uh, either the diamond has gone down a storm drain and is now in Monaco Harbour, or maybe it's been stolen by one of the marshals or something. But yeah. Uh, so the, the the base livery is the is the, the is the British Racing Cream Jag, but just with this red going on, which does not work as well. Let's be honest. Um, but an A, an O, a B, S for the hilarious story. Obviously, I you know it comes the, the livery comes with a diamond, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't think it's an improvement on the original look, though. Um, you can tell it's a one-off livery because the thing is, if this was their base livery, everyone would be like, "Well, what?" Well, apart from the ocean cell, they'd be like, "What the fuck is that? Why is the nose cone green?" That it would, yeah, that would kind of mess things up. Uh, I'll put it in A because we put the original in S, so let's move this down to A. Um, was it confirmed to be a real time? Pretty certain it was a real one. I mean, some people say it must have been fake, but because they said it was uninsured. Um, but anyway. Orange Arrows, another classic. Yeah, this is a gr this is a great one. Again, I love this car. I did a whole video talking about the Arrows A23 and how it became a Minardi and then it became a Super Aguri and then it became a Marussia in one form. Um, but yeah, oh, this was the one. Everyone remembers this. It's just so bold orange with, again, classic orange phone provider and the orange wheels, like, ugh, and the Red Bull... Because like that 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 fits in nicely. That fits in really well. I mean, Enrique Vinod's helmet is fuck ugly, but you know. Otherwise, some people are saying A, but I just need an S. Um, a a village bicycle. If it was the village, but everyone's had a ride in the A twenty three. Um, yeah, I'm I'm putting in A because yeah, just emblematic of the time. Uh, next up, Orange Force India. So I call this orange because that's sort of orange, but basically they, they did a couple of different ones, but this was the base livery that Force India had throughout 2008 in the races. And so we've got, yeah, the white, the gold strips. Again, it's very HRT with this sort of orangey, ready thing. Um, doesn't quite land, I'll be honest, um, as, as, as the maroon did. So we got E, B, A, C, uh, A, B, D, D, C. Yeah, this one, it just isn't. And also, there's a lot of black going on down here. I'm guessing that's probably... Well, obviously, that's where the exhaust is. So I think the black is used for cooling purposes. Or, I'm not sure that would, that would warm it. No, no, it reflects the sunlight. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, the, 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 it, it's a bit of a mess. They weren't... This is before we got the proper Kingfisher. Um, where's the other one? Where's the testing livery? Oh, it's an A. This is not an A. Uh, a, B, B, C, C, E, 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 Z, Z, C. Yeah, let's put this in C. Following on from that, we have the orange spiker. So again, spiker, they, they decide to drop the fluorescent look and we get this throughout 2007. Yep, another bright orange with the gunmetal gray. It's the classic spiker looks. And again, because this is originally, they originally made planes or airplane engines. So it has a sort of aviation-y type vibe, I guess. But yeah, good shade of orange, good shade of grey. Not sure quite how well it works. It doesn't land in the same way as um, the orange arrows. Um, but anyway, we've got A, A, S, A, C, A, A, S, A, S, A, 
A, drove like ass but looked great. Yeah, yeah, I would say, I think people, yeah, people are saying this too, it's, it's basically a worse version of the orange arrows, but it's still good, to be honest. Um, so maybe just an A, I think. Um, nobody's gone in F yet. Um, that one's interesting. Um, okay, so this is the Ova Anderson Toyota. Okay, so this one needs some explanation. Basically, this was in mid... I think it was 07 or 08. Ova Anderson, who used to be the CEO of Toyota, died, and they put this black strip across the uh, the cockpit, the tub, like that. So yeah, it, it's it's the basic Panasonic Toyota livery, but with that 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 asymmetrical black strip. So uh, F B C B A B C A C, yeah, it's just kind of. I mean, I, I I'm not the biggest fan of the original, the base livery on its own, um, but if we take a comparison, so I put I put the Dark Knight one in B. This one is not... I don't think this is not quite... Because obviously now it's just white and red on the side. I think this is worse than that. So maybe that goes in C. Uh, uh, Ozjet Minardi. 2005 Minardi. So base colours black, but we got the white and the red highlights and the Ozjet. The Ozjet, this fits in well. I like the Lost Boys um, edition. So yeah, the last ever Minardi. Uh, I think it's good, to be honest. It's a good shade of black. It's nice and shiny. The white fits in well. Um, S-A-C-S-S-C-B-A-C-D-B-B-B-B-B. Hey, mate, greetings from Mexico. Thank you. Good morning. It must be, what, 10 a.m. In, in Mexico? Te 9, 10 a.m.? B-C-B-B. Arriba España. I something Spain. I don't know what Ariba is, but yeah. Makes a car. Greetings from the Netherlands. Oh, everyone all over the world, actually, everyone is. But yeah, anyway, CCB, 8 a.m. 8 a.m., nice, nice and early. Um, DS, it's a Minardi. Greetings from Pyongyang. Oh, yeah. How's the, how's the state-controlled internet? And Greece. Brazil. Everyone's from everywhere. Okay, who, who, who's tuning in from outside of Europe? Because that's what I always want to see, is how many non-Europeans... I've got tuning in. Um, but yeah, so people are saying B, Christmas Island. Good. That's Australia, isn't it? Hungary, uh, BB. I like this, yeah. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, yeah, as compared to the black, black and white, yeah, let's go B. So the Philippines, nice. Ukraine, New York City, Hungary, Slovenia. Barbados, Lapland, nice. Ah, so Neapolitan. Everyone's from everywhere. It's not just all. It's not just British people. UK, yay. Slovakia, London, Austria, Sandton, yeah. Indianapolis, Georgia, nice. Warsaw, Wales, Switzerland, Hull. I used to live in Wales. N near Buffalo, New York, Poland, Arizona, Iowa, Transylvania, nice. I'm from Mars, Erfurt in Germany. Is the arm open for man dich loben? Is the arm above? Would you? Oh, my German's patchy. I was trying to translate that. Um, Poland, Iceland, Antarctica. Everyone's from everywhere. I love it. Um, okay. Sweden as well. Pizza pasta land. Uh, what's next? Is that Ozjet? Yep. Yeah, okay. Panasonic Toyota. So again, it's the same. Yeah. Basically, the one we did two 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 tiers ago, but without the black strip. So we did. Um, so yeah, th this is what they carried this same basic design from two thousand and two all the way to two thousand nine. But by the later seasons, they took this kind of stripped paint thing on the red. But beyond that, it's the same basic design, even with the the slant on the nose. Luxembourg, Greece, Winston Salem, North Carolina. Um. Not bad, not bad, German. It's just a SpongeBob joke. Oh. Is that arm open for man dich loben? How to sound Iowa? A A B A A A A. Ralph, the most unpleasant guy I ever worked with. You worked with Ralph? Do tell. That sounds interesting. Um. 
Very iconic and recognizable, though not the prettiest. Yeah, th for me, this is like super aguri, but worse is kind of how I think of it. Um, so what are we doing? Uh, okay, well, the, well, to be honest, it's no different from the, from the other one, so I'll put it in B. Um, okay. Oh, yes. Papaya McLaren. This is this is when it was done properly. Again, pre-season testing. And they did this in the late 90s. And yeah, and again, they would do this. This is 2005. That monster of a car, the MP420. Um, yeah, with the bright papaya. I mean, this is much better than the papaya that they've got now when they pre they're pretending that it's like harking back to Marlboro McLaren when it looks like nothing. Um yeah, this is... The, I mean, you can see it brings all the shapes out. I mean, look at the side pods. Like, oh. And everything's go. We've got everything going on here. We've got these things, which obviously it's aerodynamic. It looks like an exhaust, like some really weird, like, upwards pointing exhaust. And you've got the bull horns. Yeah. That's, a, that's an S. Um, That's 2006. Oh, is it 06? It's not. Oh, yeah, Montoya was there 2006 still, wasn't he? Yeah, I, for, I forgot. Um, literally 2018 livery, yeah. Uh, okay. Phase one Red Bull. So this was the livery that they had 05 and 06. And you can tell it is the same basic livery as they have now, but there's a lot more silver going on. That's why it's different. And there's a sort of checkered thing. This car was out today, actually, because obviously everyone's been filming. The, the new Red Bull today has been doing that, um, the test run at Silverstone. They made it do a race against the RB1, and you can see the two taking off together off the starting line. Um, yeah, it's not... Um, so, yeah, it's not. It's just not quite as good as the, the standard Red Bull livery, I don't think. Um, so we got... B A A C A A B B A uh B Well we cut okay so it's that that was C. I think it is better than that testing livery. So maybe that goes in B. Um Yep. Yeah. Oh yes. Yep. Yeah. Phase one Toro Rosso. Again another classic. They they made the bull look even meaner. This like bold red charging bull with the bluey horn things and the dark yeah the dark blue shines up really nicely. They never should have got rid of this. I mean I I, I didn't mind the 2010 2011 where they had more red going on at the front, but yeah most for the most part Toro Rosso do do good liveries. But yeah this was a this was an immense an immense look, and everyone and yeah and obviously everybody is saying s to that. So yeah. There it goes. Um, phase two Red Bull. So this is basically the bog standard Red Bull look that we've had ever since. I mean, they have, they have, there have been some minor changes. So we had obviously change of sponsors. I mean, these days in the hybrid era, they've gone for a matte look rather than a shiny one. We don't have these stripes on the nose cone on the tub anymore. They used to have the can on the sides of the rear wing, but it's the same. It's the same basic design that we've seen with the yellow and the bull on the side and the, the yellow nose. Yeah, it's a modern. It's one that's kind of boring, but it's also become so like emblematic of of Red Bull. Um, and everyone's saying B B A B C B B B A A B. I feel like for me, it's been it's been used a bit too much. Um, so I might throw it in. B, or then it's with the other one. I think it is a... Hmm. Yeah, because they're different. Oh, yeah. Let's put it in B. Um, it's become a bit too, too like, regular. In the same way that we always know the Ferrari's going to red. You always know. As Max said, it looks exactly the same as last year. Is it? Yes, it does. Um, okay. Phillips Williams. The 2009 Williams. So, uh, yeah. Um, so white with this kind of mid blue look again, it looks well, obviously Phillips it's, it's a, it's a shaving razor. If, if this car, if it, yeah, if you turned a, a razor into a car, it would be this. Um, but yeah, they use this again, 2010, 27 rough, 
2011 roughly. But yeah, just black with some some blue. Uh, white with blue and a bit of black. We've got A, B, B, S, C, A, A, B, S, A, B, 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 um, B, B, B. Yeah. A lot of Bs. I, I, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't inspire much in me. It's just kind of eh, but people like it, so let's go B. Uh, okay. Pope John Paul II Ferrari. So this one basically was the 2005 Bahrain Grand Prix. That weekend, Pope John Paul II died. And so Ferrari, obviously Italian, very Catholic, they put a black nose cone as their tribute. But otherwise, it, otherwise it is the same base Marlboro McLaren livery. Uh, so B A A F silly tribute A B A. Yeah, because the thing is, obviously, the original is a is a the original is an S, but the B just doesn't. It kind of wrecks it a little bit. Uh, the the black even, and everyone is saying A. So maybe it should have. Uh, Move it, maybe it should move down to, to A. It's a subtle difference, but it's also one that is kind of noticeable, even though that's a very contradictory thing to say. Um, okay. <laughs> What's after this? Ooh, RBS Williams, the 2006 Williams. So again, we've got, again, it's white and blue, but it's like a really metallic, shiny blue. I like this. I like this car. It's just an interesting car because it was good and bad at the same time because in its raw pace was actually very decent. It just never worked. That was the problem. But yeah, I love the look. I mean, the, again, the silver rims looks mean. It's just, oh yeah, really, re really good shade of blue. Fits, the, fits that really well with the RBS going on in the Alliance. And yeah. A-A-S-A-A-A-B... S, almost S, B, A, A, uh, peep, is that Nico, it is Nico, that is helmet, that is, yeah, that is the Monaco-based YouTuber's helmet, isn't it, um, A, A, yeah, yeah, it is, it's, it's not quite an S, this is like, almost, this is like an A, an A, an A star, I think, uh, Okay, Red Bull Sauber. So this is the year 2000. So as I explained before, Red Bull title sponsor to Sauber from 1995. And well, it, it was meant to be until 2005. But then they, after, in 2001, they sold their stare to Credit Suisse. But until then, we had this look, which had the Red Bull mixed with the Patronus. So again, it's a very toothpaste-y thing we've got going on. Um, and yeah, it obviously, it hints at Red Bull to come because we've got the yellow nose cone and we've got the Red Bull on the engine cover. Uh, at least, again, it's bold, but looking at it, it does kind of look like a bit of a mess. Um, but we're seeing A, C, A, B, A, A, C, C, A, minus, uh, B minus, D. Uh, so where's the other one? The other one is is in B. I don't think it's as nice as the Credit Suisse one. Um, on that basis, yeah, let's, uh, although actually, it, don't, it doesn't really, no one's saying D. Yeah, I'll put it in C. I was thinking D, but nobody's saying D. Um, that'll go in C. Next up, Samantha King Super Aguri. So, this is the livery that Super Aguri used for three of the four races they did in 2008. Um, in their very brief tenure in the sport, their base colours were always white and red. This time we got a lot of white and red, but then we got these little black strips. And the black, the black on the on the tub is actually a fairly nice addition, I think. Um, this one is not the Arrows A23. This actually is the Honda RA107. This is the Earth Dreams Honda because they used that in 2008. It was in 2007 they got access to the race-winning 2006 Honda when they got points. Um, but it, it, it just, yeah, this one, it doesn't, it, it is actually quite unoriginal because it's just stripes. There's no interesting design kind of conception, I guess. Um, I, I think it does kind of work. I mean, yeah, black, black, red, and white are just good colors that work together. I think A, A plus, D, A, C, C, A, 
C, B, C, D, A, C. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe just this. Uh, do I want a B or do I want a C? C, C, D, D, D. Most people lean it up. Maybe we need someone in D. Yeah, let's put that in D. Okay, all right. Uh, September 11th Ferrari. So this one, so this, so this is um, 2001 Italian Grand Prix. Took place a few days after the September 11th attacks. So as their tribute to that, Ferrari took off all the sponsors and they put this big ass black nose cone on the car. So this is kind of like looking at a preseason, like yeah, a preseason Ferrari. So yeah, just red and some white and a black nose. Uh, it does take away a lot of the charm of the Marlboro Ferrari look, doesn't it? Really. D, D B E B S E. Uh, S, S E. Goodness, the duality of man. S and E. D S F. Yeah, obviously, I get the message, but in terms of its aesthetics, it it isn't really working. Obviously, it, that wasn't the purpose of it. It wasn't there to look... That, they weren't thinking, oh, we're going to do this because it looks nice. Um, F, C. So maybe it needs to go in the middle. Um, honestly, kind of bangs. F, D, E. Let's put it in D, I think, maybe. Um, ooh, yes. Snake Jordan. 1997 to 2001, they had this when they had the actual snake on the front of the car. And we got, you know, buzzing hornets, the black, the stripe kind of bee thing. They knew, I mean, yeah, Jordan, they knew how to do a livery and they knew how to fit the the sponsors in a way that made it work. But again, again, when I was a kid, I was like, the yellow car, that's Jordan. Like, easy to see. Easy S. Um... Spiker MF1. So at the tail end of 2006, Midland were purchased by Spiker. And so for the final three or four races that year, they ran this livery. So they had the orange with the kind of silvery, the kind of silver look. So this is like hinting at what they did in 2007. I don't like this as much though, because this is an uglier shade of orange. It's a more of a fluorescent thing. It's a different, because it was like a gray and this is leaning more in the silver direction. A, A, E, A, A, E C D D A C D C C D D B C. Again, it stands out in terms of I like having a, a grid with lots of different colors, but it's just not. It doesn't feel right. Um, so where's the original? So the original Midland is C, and then the two spike liveries are A and B. Um, A C C B D D D Z McLaren at home. It is very much like Mum. Can we have McLaren? No, we have McLaren at home, and that's what you get. Yeah, I think it's worse than the the, the previous one. I'd put it. I'll put it in D. I think. Um. Ooh, S S United Super Guri. So this is the 2007 Super Guri, which was the 2006 Honda. So again, we've got the same basic idea of the black, black, white with red plus some black highlights, but they've gone for a different design. Again, it's kind of sporty. The SS United logo is quite a nice looking one. Um, and it goes across the, the, the rear wing as well. Samantha King's, the black, the black highlight is nice around there. So, so good. A, D, B, S, S, A, S, S, B, S. People are very generous to this one. I mean, maybe I'll be honest, like Davidson's helmet compliments it so well. Um, a car sponsored by a company with SS is the name of the model, including S, A, B, low A, Nineties and eighties tier list, yeah, that they'll be done in the future as well. Um, I've done obviously I've done my nineties. That'll be the next one actually. After this, I need to do the nineties cars, and then after that, will be eighties livery. No, it'll be it'll be two thousands cars. I need to do. I don't think I've done that one yet. Then it would be nineties 
90s liveries and then 90s cars, yeah. A lot of S's. I'm surprised by that. I don't think this is an S. I think it's an A. Um, okay. Star Wars Red Bull. So another one. 2005, Monaco Grand Prix, release of Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Red Bull does this. And they've got these flames coming off the side um, and powered by the dark side. I mean... Did I do 2000s cars? I guess I did. Oh, then it's 90s next. Um, cool. Um, yeah, I love this. I love the creativity. Again, it's like a, it's very like it's like a, what a kid would design, putting flames on a car to make it look faster. Um, what have we got? A B A S S F S A B A B A S. I'm almost looking at an S here. I think may maybe not maybe not quite an S. Everyone's saying A. Yeah, maybe let's just do an A. Yeah. And then State Express Triple Five BAR. So this is the one people do remember when BAR were doing their one-off liveries. Chinese Grand Prix, uh, 2004. They run this this thing. Like, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. It's, you know, it's this starry night sky, twilighty, blue, twinkly thing, and then just some random bits of yellow with the 555. What is what is State Express 555? Does anyone know what that is? It sounds like like a bank to me, or like a gambling company, or I don't know, something, something, something moneyed, moneyed. You didn't do the live TV, it's just a bit. Oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I hadn't done just the cars yet in a live stream. So, yeah, 2000s cars and what's next? SSB tobacco. Tobacco. Okay, yes, cigarettes. S. Oh, those aren't S's, those are fives. I thought everyone was going like SSS. No, they were just going five by five. Um, F A. Again, it's unique. It, it gives vibes of the, Hon the, the 2007 Honda. It's just a bit random with this. But the thing is, that yellow is a different shade of yellow from that yellow. That's like... I mean, this is like vomit yellow. And that's like if the car's been kept in a garage for years, but the nose cone has been sticking out the front and it's just been left in the sun. Um, oh, it's the Chinese version of Lucky Strike. Okay, that's what, that's what it is. But anyway, F-A-B... Uh... Maybe it just needs to go in the middle. It would look if this was their their livery for the whole season. I think people would look at it like, "What the hell is that?" Um, yeah. Stripe B A R. Um, ignore the lasses. So again, this one. I think it was the Ita Italian. It was one of the races in two thousand and four that Anthony Davidson got to run this. Um, and it was. I can hear a toilet in the background. I uh, Well, my dishwasher's running, and that's probably what you can hear. Um, I hoped the mic wouldn't pick it up. Um, okay, so yeah, we've got black and white with these, like, stripes, like hazard stripey things, like a level crossing or something. So A, F, C, B, A, double D, haha, C to D, A, F, D. I mean, I think it's quite nice, to be honest. It's... It's plain, but kind of works at the same time. B, D, B, C, A, B. Um, B, A, O colors were clean. Yeah. It looks like a Minardi, to be honest, doesn't it? Um, let's think. I think, it's, I think it's an improvement over the, that one. Maybe it should just go, uh, what's the other black and whites? Ah, uh, yeah, let's go and B. Oh, not too many left now. So, striped Super Aguri. So this is the first Super Aguri livery, and they had this um, on the SA05, which they had for the first 10 races in 2006. And again, yeah. Again, because they've always had the, the red, the red and the white with Samantha Kings. We got the stripe going around the nose. Again, this is the Arrows A23 with a few modifications. Black with the Honda, the white, you know, fins elements on the front wing, the red even. 
Again, Frank Montagny's helmet with the pink does clash. Why is his helmet pink? It does clash quite badly. Um, so let's see. B A C A A C S C A D A B C S C. Uh, not bad, but they've done better. Uh, so the other, what are the other ones we've had? Um, so we've put the 07 was in A, and the 08 one was all the way down in D. Um, let's put it in B, I think. Uh, Super Fund Minardi. So 2004 Minardi, the PS04B, which again was based off the Arrows A23. Uh, it was the base black and white, but the main change is because of the Super Fund. They've got this gre this shiny green engine cover. And then they've got the orange. Um, so there is a lot going on here, let's be honest. And it, this is the thing, Minardi, they, they, it was just a mess in terms of it looks like it, it it look it looks like one of those dodgy websites when you click on it and like a million ads pop up or something. That's what's going on. Um So we've got F F D D to E D F C D F D There is a lot going on. I've just noticed the ER9S. We've got some orange here. Then we've got the yellow. Then we've got this purple. So many little liveries. Violet supports Orania. Um, Golden Palace red. Yeah. I like the super fun look. The engine cover I kind of look, but it's just a mess. Who's driving? Um, that isn't Bruni or Baumgartner. Who were their third driver in 07? Oh, what was his name? There was a guy, he had a name, maybe Dawn Boss, uh, or um, there was another Dutch, Baz Linders, I think actually might have been what it was. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Baz Linders, that's what they're saying. Um, the old guy. Oh, no, no, you're thinking of Chadnok Nisani. That was 2005. Um Look up the Australia version. Uh, maybe I should do that, yeah. Australian Grand Prix Minardi. Can't type. Oh. Well, that's basically the same as the, um, uh, as the 05 car. Yeah, this one is, yeah. Well, that's obviously why I didn't include this one. That's the same. Yeah. That's why the 04 is it's the base. It's the same basic design as the 05 look, but this one is obviously more uh, more different. Uh, um, a lot of people are not liking it. C D. I feel like we need an F at some point, but this is not an F look. I think it's a D. I don't think we're going to get any in F, are we? Um, next up, Superman returns Red Bull. So this is 2006 Monaco Grand Prix to promote the release of Superman Returns. They put a red cape on the car and the drivers all wore capes. Um, so yeah, the base livery and then they put the red on. Kind of cool, actually. Yeah, it's a good... It looks... It's like it's trying to be the Toro Rosso. Um, a D A A B A A. A, I love to be honest. I love the I love the overalls because they were wearing capes. A B B. Um, B A A A. A lot of people are saying A. Yeah, let's, yeah. Fuck it. Let's throw in A. Alongside the Star Wars, the Star Wars look. Oh, not many to go. We've got about an hour and forty minutes in the end. The pit crew was. I think they were stormtroopers. The pit crew. Yeah. For the, that one. And then we got Telefonica Minardi, this this one which from a distance looked like a Jordan. This fluorescent yellow with the blue and white checkered thing and the Telefonica. I mean, it's, it does stand out. Obviously, Minardi loved to change things up and this just stood out immediately, even if it did kind of look like Jordan. Jordan at home, yeah. 
S S. So many S's. I mean, <sighs> I don't have quite seen it as an S myself. I mean, to me, it's like a, just a less good looking version of the Jordan yellow. Um, but yeah, it is so. Di but that's an A because it's so different from what Minaji usually had. Yeah, it is very different. B B B a bit over the top. Yeah. It looks too much like the Jordan, that's the problem. But the, the car itself, like, God knows what's going on with that nose. This, like, pyramid thing they've got going on. Um, it ran third in the USA Grand Prix. Yeah, that was uh, Mazakane. And that's that's your... That's your Verstappen's helmet, isn't it? But in 2000, it was Mazakane and Mark Genet, I think. But then... Verstappen, I mean, tr good luck finding a team that Verstappen wasn't connected to at some point or didn't drive for. Like in the 90s, he tested with literally every team. Um, oh, no, that is Janae's helmet. Yeah, I'm being stupid. That is, that's Janae's. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll be in A. Lot of, loads of people love this one, which is odd to me because I'm like, it's, it's all right. Um then we have tribal Subaru Guri. So when they introduced the SA06 at the German Grand Prix, they brought in this new livery where they took a new nose cone, this more aggressive, like, swirling tribal kind of look with the stripes. Like, I like this one. And again, for a lot of people, this is the first car that they would drive in F1 Championship Edition. Um, it's a good shade of red, good white. This, again, is what I'm talking about. It's basically Toyota, but better. Uh... S O A A Yeah. I wanna throw it in A. Um no, we're approaching the end now. Hey Peter, thoughts on the Ferrari car from this year. Uh everyone is a bit obsessed with it. I think it's because it's a Ferrari and we're like, well, okay, it's a little bit different, but it doesn't look that different from the previous ones. Again, there's a lot of carbon fiber going on. But they've kind of done it in a way that works. But I think people just get a bit too obsessed with them because they're Ferrari. And they're like, oh, they have a car. That means they, they're going to win the title. It's like, no. It's, yeah. But they're a team that just runs on vibes because they don't have, like, engineering to fall back on or, you know, man a good management structure. They just have passion and vibes. And it's less of a... When you look at what they do with Charles and Carlos, it's less of a Formula One team and more of a modeling agency at this point. But, yeah. Um, anyhow, Trust Minardi, 2003. So this one, yeah, th we've got the black, the black, white, and red, but they've got the Trust logos on the side, big ass European aviation. Yeah, not bad look again. Um, very clinical because it's Trust. All I can think is computers when I look at that, um, Justin Wilson and Yoss. That's not that's not Verstappen's helmet, so I guess that's Justin, or maybe that's one of their test drivers. Um, so we've got D C B C C C C A C C C. Very solid B. No idea who was driving the in the pick though, because Minardi had a bucket load of test drivers. Yeah, it's going to be. It could be someone like Nathaniel Baton, or that's not that's not Carter Kayan's helmet. He did some stuff with them. C A. I don't mind it. Um, it makes the car look faster than it was. Let's come. Wh where are the other Minardis? Uh, so we put one of them. There's one. In, we got one in D. Uh, with the bright yellow in A. Where did the 04 one, the Ozjet Minardis in B? Uh, let's just put this in the middle. Maybe like, like have it in C. Why did Minardi have lots of test drivers? Money. They needed pay drivers and they would test people out. Nicholas, maybe that's Nicholas Case's helmet actually. Yeah, because he did the final five races after Justin Wilson went to Jaguar to replace Antonio Pizzonia, who went to Williams or just got dropped. No, he was already their test driver and then he got fired from Jordan. Jaguar, not Jordan. Uh. Okay. Virgin Braun. Braun GP. 
So yeah, the white, the black, the fluorescent green. Uh, at the beginning of the year, they didn't have any sponsors except for Virgin themselves. And then they've got Canon and MIG FX and they threw in a few more. Where's Midland? Oh, we did that one earlier. I think Midland's D. S, S. Everyone's saying S. I mean, I guess so. Like for me, it's like, it's good, but not... Maybe I'm biased because I was a Vettel fan and I just couldn't stand that they were... Braun would... Braun... Well, th this is the thing. They won that title by being amazing and then just being diabolically bad at the same time and still won it because Red Bull did the same thing. Um, yeah, 2009, it was, it was a funny season. It's one of those seasons where it was like whoever was the least worst would win it rather than being the best. Um, everyone's going S. Is there, I mean, maybe this picture doesn't highlight the green quite well enough because of the lighting, because this is obviously taken at either Abu Dhabi or um, Singapore because it's at night. S B A S A A. Yeah, it's not an S. It's not quite an S. It's an A. Uh, yay, Vodafone McLaren. Another modern classic. I still have my... My Vodafone McLaren t-shirt, which I was given when I was 16 and still fits me. Yeah, perfect use of chrome and the bright orange. And they kept this up till 2013, didn't they? Obviously, any even though I was... Well, I was a Hamilton fan in 08, but not after that. And I was never a Button fan. But, you know, the British we had the British Dream Team. And at Silverstone, it was just a sea of orange caps. Because of McLaren, um, it's a classic. Yeah, nice, nice metallic kind of tough mechanical industrial kind of look yeah very british yeah it's it's you can tell it's it's very british because it's all gray yeah not a bright red of of you know mediterranean ferrari um oh we're near the end aren't we ah oh, yeah another one west mclaren yeah i mean this is not a picture that obviously includes when they would put the names on the side but yeah, 1996, 1997 to 2005. Yeah. Again, we need this back again. This is such an emblematic look for the 2000s to see. A, the, and it's just saying Mika or David or Kimi on the side in this case. That's Kimi. Is that Kimi's helmet? No. That is his helmet, isn't it? He changed it up around that time. But, you know, everyone's saying S, and yeah, I don't blame them. Yeah. They used to... The thing is, they used to put... Oh, oh it says Raikkonen there, doesn't it? There are some teams where that they've got every... Both drivers have the same bloody helmet, and I'm trying to tell them apart getting pictures, and it's impossible. The exhaust... I mean, the exhaust look weird, and to be honest, those exhausts gave them a lot of grief that year. Um, and maybe that's why, because it looks a bit odd. Um, uh, wrong thing. Five more looks to go. Okay. White Force India. Uh, okay, this one. I think this was being used at the end of the season off in the winter testing after the season had ended in 2008 because it's the 2008 Force India, but the the, the, orange, the reddy orange thing has been replaced with grey and they've got the gold and the white engine cover. Um, S... D F F looks like a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, it does actually, doesn't it? Like Kingfisher cigarettes. D D for disaster. C C C. The gold prevents a lower rank. Yeah, if it was just grey and white, it would look diabolically bad. E not a match between cover and livery. Much gold in side pods. Um, there's also a lot going on because you've got these all these tiny little sponsors everywhere. Um. Whose helmet is that? I feel like that's Liuzzi or maybe Satil. If I can zoom in, does it say no? Or one of their random test drivers, probably. Uh, yeah, let's... Uh, maybe we'll throw it in E. Fizikella... Uh, maybe, I'm sure... I feel like that's a Liuzzi design, but... Because he was their test driver. Capri's son is Satil. 
Oh, yeah, that would have been his sponsors, wouldn't it? Yeah, Capri Sun, German, Me Medi. Yeah, maybe that is... Oh, God, God, I can't remember. One of those, whatever. Yeah. And then we have the white Super Aguri. So this... This uh, livery appeared only once. It was at the 2008 Spanish Grand Prix. For some reason, um, it was their final race, but for some reason, Super Aguri switched the livery up and just made it a lot more white. So base white, and we got some red and some black and a red Honda logo. I don't know why... I don't know why they changed this up. Unless they'd lost... Maybe they'd lost a lot of their sponsors by this point because I'm not actually seeing any. Maybe that's why. Um... Do many Brits learn German? Uh, not really. I mean, okay, so we do German. You start learning it in secondary school. So once you hit year seven, so that's when you're age 11, 12, you will start learning it. But by the end of year nine, um, that's when it's no longer compulsory. If you wanted to do a GCSE or an A-level in German, you can. Um, but... Um, it's not something most people go on to learn beyond that. And again, because we don't... This is the problem with England, is that because English is the lingua franca, most people don't bother learning German or other any foreign languages because we don't need to in a lot of cases because most of the world, in terms of it's from a tourism perspective, speaks English. And it's not like we consume a lot of like foreign language films and TV, whereas on the continent, everyone's going to be watching a lot of British and American television. But for us, the closest you get to that, like Scandinavian like crime dramas are very popular, like The Killing and The Bridge. People will watch those, but they're with subtitles and stuff. Um, but yeah, some people will learn German because they actually want to learn it or because they need to if they're going to move. Um, but the problem is that I I learned it. We did it at school. We didn't really cover it too well. And then I, when I actually chose to do it on Duolingo, it, I, I learned so much more about how grammar works that they never even covered. Um and I actually really enjoyed it. And I did the course. The problem is that you don't get to use it ever. I don't know any Germans. I've been to Germany once. It's the same with Dutch. I learned Dutch and I got fairly good, but then I just couldn't speak it. Because if you, I went to Amsterdam once, but everyone speaks English. That's the problem. You need to just have a way of immersing yourself in it. And for us, that isn't really an option. Um, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, no, fr fr people will, uh, French people will learn from primary school and there's more, we're more kind of, um, it's more in the popular culture, French than German. Um, but again, most people don't really bother continuing. I hated French at school, but I really liked German. Um, we did one semester of Spanish, which I found, I found Spanish really easy, but we only did it for one semester. And they even allowed Latin because I know that in Germany, people learn Latin as well as English and French in school, but yeah. I do wish that more Brits could speak foreign languages and I myself wish I could actually speak German. Well, German and Dutch. I'd love to be able to speak both of them at a conversational level. Um, I can read them and I can understand them reasonably well. It's just speaking them is difficult. Anyway, so what are we thinking with this? So D, E, that aside, E, D, C. Wir können für dich von jetzt auf Deutsch chatten. Uh, we can we can chat we can now chat in German for you. Yeah, I mean if you well, I can't speak it much, but I can obviously translate. I can try and translate what anyone writes. If you want to chat away in German and Dutch, and I'll see what I can pick up and chat between yourselves. Um, at the end of the stream, will you give your opinion on the confirmed and potential driver moves? Um, I can. Yeah, um, I can try. Nay, leave for neat. No, don't, no, don't love, live, lever. Wow, very good pronunciation. I'm Dutch if you would like to learn it. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I need to revise it because I did learn a lot and I used, um, I like the YouTube channel Easy Dutch because they will go into the street and just chat to random people. Um, and we'll just, and, and you get to hear rather than it's like, hello, I would like to buy some cheese. You get to hear people actually speaking like Dutch normally and using slang and everything else. Um, ich spiel Fußball. It's, it shouldn't be ich spiele Fußball. For, I play football. Nee, lief und neat. Oh, preferably not. Oh, okay. That's what that is. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's the spiker? Uh, spiker. Oh, my brain's back to front. Super Guri. C, C. 
what's everyone else saying? C. I've forgotten what half of everyone said for this one. Um, where was the O8? Okay, so we didn't like that one. I think it's better, this more base white. C to D. Maybe we throw that in C. E. A. I'm afraid to someone from England. He's learning Dutch with an app. Yeah, people use... Most people use... If they don't use Duolingo, they'll use, like, Memrise. Um, it's a funny one, because Dutch... Like, compared to the two, like, Dutch grammar is kind of easier but harder because there's no case system. And there's they've got two genders instead of three. So that made things a bit easier. The problem was that the grammar is just makes... The grammar is completely back to front, even compared to German half the time. That was the annoying thing. Uh, but yeah, the next car... The Wings of Life Red Bull. So this was the one that David Coulthard run, ran at um, Brazil 2008, his final race. It lasted all but two corners, thanks to Nakajima. Yeah, so yeah, white with a bit of black and a red stripe and the Red Bull thing. Yeah, another white one. BDD, Turkey 2021 vibes. It's not nearly as good as the Turkey 2021 look. Um, D, E, B, A, that's an A. Um, very good looking car, uh, B, anyone else? D, 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 B, uh, C, maybe a C, I like, it, 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 I don't think we were expecting it, it's one of these surprise liveries, yeah, we could put it in C, uh, only two more to go, um, X-Ray B-A-R, I called this. So this this was the Italian Grand Prix, I think. 2004, Anthony Davidson. They gave him this thing, which has like a diagram of the driver. Which is quite cool, I think. Um, although there's a lot going on. They've got like a phone cable for some reason here. Uh, a literal barcode. Oh, that's very clever. B-A-R code. Ha ha ha. Um, base black... But again, that, that really dull green gold green that they used to have in the red. Um, I like this livery, but it was a bit weird that they only made one of it. Well, it was, it was only for Davidson. See, I swear that in 2004, Davidson, he had what Jack Doohan could dream of. Could only dream of. Because Davidson got to actually drive the cars and do something. Um, and they let, like, and they even gave him these fun one-off liveries to have for Friday. Whereas Doohan... He's like, oh, I don't want to race in Formula 2, even though as a Nalpine Junior, it would be fully funded because I want to concentrate on, you know, perfecting the art of looking serious while wearing headphones stood behind whoever Alpine's team principal is. As if he's going to get a seat with them. Like, he's not... We, we, we're lucky to get one new driver a year, and the one that's going to come in and just usurp everybody at this moment is Kimi Antonelli, it looks like. Um... Jack Doohan, he he Jack Doohan, he is he is not him, I'm afraid. Um and the moment has gone just like it has with Felipe Drogovic. Uh so X-ray in the driver's position is cool. Friday liveries are a great idea. C for cool. B for the fun idea. B yeah, that they could do it now if we had third drivers. It's like it just it because but obviously they had third cars. It just it's like obviously McLaren, it's just kind of cringe the way McLaren have a new livery at every single race now. It's just a bit much. And, and Lando having a different helmet design at every single race. There's always something to commemorate with every race now. Like, I was just... We got to Vegas, and I was like, every single car is going to look different. And I think every car did look different, almost. If Alpine promotes a junior, it's going to be Victor Martins. That's the thing. He's got Victor Martins behind him. And then Kushmini is getting good. And then you've also got to even factor in, like, Gabriele Mini... Nicholas Solov and um, Sophia Flush is not getting to F1, but they've got a good bunch of juniors, and and that's the thing. Doohan needs to start getting in there. Um, uh, maybe, well, actually, obviously, people are saying Ocon wants to go to Mercedes, and maybe Gasly might go, but Alpine is it seems like it's hanging by a thread, so I, it's not it's not the place to be for anyone. Uh, so what do we think? I love, yeah, okay, the concept. I mean, obviously, it doesn't quite line up because it makes it look like he has like no neck like a very fat neck um and he's like hunching forwards because his back is actually kind of in the fuel tank um in this um and we've got gold for some reason we've got gold this little golds on the 
on the uh, the wing mirrors for some strange reason. I don't entirely understand the whole telephone cable thing going on here as well, unless that's a zipper, which again I don't understand either. Um, anyway, what people said. B, B, uh, C. We have our first F. It's not. It's not an F. I don't think it's an F. I. It, it's unique. Um, what's the other ones they've done? So they did the the, the five five five. We put in C. Uh, the stripe one we put in B. Maybe it's just a C again. It has. What, what did I do with that? Like, oh, that 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 was the graffiti one. I put in A. I'll put it in C. Uh, oh, last one. Yellow Jordan. So this is Jordan from 2003 to 2005 when they were still yellow, but they didn't have the snake look anymore. They didn't have DHL. And so they'd gone for black. But, so they had the yellow, but just lots of black. And so, the, yeah, so this is the 2005 car. The black on the engine cover too, on the rear wing. Yeah, I like it. Obviously, it's not, it's not the snake livery. Um, but they kept the yellow. Obviously, lots of Tata. That was what Narain Carter Kane was bringing to the table. Uh, what other spots have we got here? Speed. That's the American channel. Tata. Galp. Portugal. Okay, just, yeah, so just Portugal is sponsoring Tiago Montero. RF Max. Bring back hockey. I didn't know they'd got rid of hockey. Galp Energia. I'm guessing that's a Portuguese sponsor. Autocar. Nice. Um, A, D, C, C, B, D, B, D, B, C, B, um, I think it's nice enough. I'll put it in B. Okay, so that's all of them. We ended up not needing F in the end. Um, ugh. I'm not going to recap these because I can't remember what half of them are, but, you know, obviously it, we got the, the S tier is the classics, you know, the bo both Beamers, the Jag, Chrome, Marlboro, Mild 7 Renault, Orange Arrows, Papaya, Toro Rosso, yeah, yeah, all the best ones are in S, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, how am I doing for subs? Has it gone up anymore? Ooh, goodness me. I've gained 25 subs across this stream. That's not bad. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll hang around a for a little bit, but I'm getting a sore throat, um, so I'll have to go. It's, but yeah, two hours, so we got through that fairly fairly swiftly. Uh, thoughts on the Red Bull allegations? Is it an inside job? Uh, can I send you some circuits to show... Uh, you can send them. I'll do, whenever I do my next Google Earth stream, I'll get those because I've been sent a few others by other people as well. Uh, sub, thank you, Rocky, or at Talk, Talk in the Woods. Thank you. Uh, here's the 30,000. Yeah, thank you. Thoughts on driver moves. Um, I, I suppose I chatted about this in the last stream because that was a couple of days after Hamilton's announcement. Hamilton to Ferrari, I still kind of quite can't quite believe it because it makes sense. I get the logic that at the moment Mercedes and Ferrari are basically the same in terms of performance, but it, does he not know like what Ferrari is or how easy they made his title runs from 17 to 19? Like, does he think that his presence alone is going to suddenly whip them into shape when he is someone who takes quite a passive approach to uh, race strategies, which is what they kind of um, really struggle with the most. Like, I don't really know like how it's going to go. Um, maybe it could maybe all along because it isn't, I think it is, a, it's a one plus one contract. So maybe the plan all along has been, he wants to do one year with Ferrari just so he's got them. And then if, if he's not enjoying it or if he thinks, well, I'm not confident for 26, I will then retire. But then I've had my year driving for Ferrari. Maybe that's what's happened. I don't know. Um, 
it's it's just it's quite shocking um at the same time it's obviously everyone's very excited now because people are saying can we just skip 2024 and go to 25 oh is it two plus one okay so he will there be there for 26 but he might just pull out because people people break contracts all the time don't they um oh what was the other thing on him yeah but obviously the way his fans have turned on mercedes is quite funny i think um I mean, they were turning on them enough the past two years because they hadn't produced race-winning cars anymore. Um, do you think Logan will be dropped midway through the season? Potentially. The The issue is then, I don't know if you would realistically want to... Because if you were then to throw in one of the Williams juniors, I don't think you could realistically say that either Collar Pinto or O'Sullivan would be ready for Formula 1 mid-season especially when 15 years ago you could get away with that because you had lots of testing without they wouldn't do that to them because i don't think either of them have actually have done much in the way of driving f1 cars uh unless they do eventually relent and give the seat to mick but then he's doing WEC. um or if if, if um if kimmy antonelli does does fulfill the prophecy then maybe he'll get the seat in the middle of the season Congrats on the 30k, mate. Lots of love your videos. Thank you, Jordan. Yeah, it's a, it's a big milestone. Um, but there is definitely more. If you consider that some of the bigger F1 YouTubers have like 300,000, there is a large audience out there that I haven't tapped into. Or maybe I have with my icebergs, which have like a million views, but they're just not clicking subscribe. I mean, I can see my analytics. About 95% of people that watch my videos don't subscribe. And they're like, yeah, what's that all about? Just need, I just need to get people to click subscribe and remember, and that'll help me to no end. I could gain like, you know, half a million subscribers overnight or something. Um, where do you think, where do you expect Kimmy to finish among the competitive F1 to F2 grid? Well, either way, he's going to be near the top because he's in a Pramer. Um, but I'm really excited about Formula 2 because we've got some really, really stacked drivers at the top, we've got, yeah, because we've got him, and then we've got, like, yeah, Victor Martins, um, Franco Colapinto, Dennis Hauger, Ritomo Miata, that's a very interesting one, double Super Formula and Super GT champion at once to see how he can do the uh, work with the transition. And then at the back end, you've got the useless ones like Joshua Dirksen and Rafael Villa Gomez and Amory Cordiel, but generally, very high standard on the Formula 2 grid. Formula 3, I'm not so convinced, but then Formula 3 is usually mostly useless drivers. Um, you deserve more. You're awesome with a super thing voice. Thank you. It is. It's interesting that everyone loves my voice because I've always been very self conscious and always just thought, oh, I just like sound na nasal and monotonal. And now I'm used to talking into a microphone and recording my voice at the time when I used to never do that. So I'm kind of used to it. W one idea I do have for a live stream is because I have a lot of F1 books. Is I've got um I've got Adrian Newey's autobiography, How to Build a Car, or How to Build a Formula One Car. I was thinking what I might want to do is like a live stream of me reading it um but if i was going to do that because of copyright i would need to get permission from the publishers which i might i might you know send them an email and see if they just say yes you can do it that's fine but if they're like yes you can do it but you must you must pay us a thousand pounds it's like no get fucked um <laughs> but yeah people like to laugh you'll get subs if you crack jokes stats are great for nerds like us but humor yeah yeah obviously there are some videos where i try to be funny um and that, um, so yeah, I mean, the, the, not, not every video I try to put jokes in, but I, I do what I can. I'm going to try and keep it unique to me because obviously there are, there, there are, we, we, you have the, the kind of meme, like Datcha 44 and Gross John are like the meme channels. And then FP1 Will does comedy stuff. He does his comedy reviews. Obviously Josh does a lot of comedy. And then you've got Rocket Powered Mohawk who is in a whole different ballpark when it comes to, to, to comedy. I mean, I don't think you can consider anything he does to be remotely kind of educational or informative. Um, but, you know, he knows how to crack a joke or two, even though it's not... It, I understand... I, I, I understand, obviously, his 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 humour. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I think it's funny. Um, new e-book live stream is also would be great. Yeah, I would love to do that. Um yeah, I think uh, I, I might look into that and see what they say. But if they're going to start asking me to pay them some stupid amount for a live stream that may only get a couple of thousand views, then it's like, well, it's not, it's not worth it. Um, I'd rather do that. I don't want to do it and then have one of them notice 
and then like have a go at me for that that's the problem um i'd want i want to i'd want to do it properly because it's not like i'm just reviewing it or just reading the odd chat the odd paragraph i'd be reading the entire thing for men to, although I, it, it would be split into two or three streams because I couldn't I couldn't read the entire book in one go because there I remember last year and I watched this Andy Circus he did an eleven hour live stream where he read the entire Hobbit and that's a relatively short book because it's a kids book and it still took him eleven hours to read it all. Um, this might be a strange comparison, but you remind me of Aidan Millward narration and storytelling. Yeah, yeah, I I mean I did used to watch a lot of his content, so I did I did take take inspiration from from Aidan Millward, um, definitely. It was him and Aldas and Josh. And they, they were the ones that, before I started making my own videos, I kind of took a lot of ideas from them on how to how to make them. Um, I'd love you to do some older F1 things that people might not know, but us nerds would love to watch. Yeah, I should do more older stuff, because the thing is, when it comes to my, my knowledge, the further back you go, my knowledge gets worse. I find this when we do podcasts. Anything from like 2005 onwards, I can do that without any revision because I watched it all. But beyond that, I do need to brush up on things and read up on stuff. And that's why like the 1950s, I can talk a bit about the cars and I can talk about the really famous drivers. But when you get the more obscure ones, it's tricky because they're ones that may have only done one or two races in Formula One, but might have been really, really well known in sports cars or or hill climb events or or pre war Grand Prix racing. Of course, that's the thing. That's what, something I do want to look at more. Is actually it's like the 1930s when you had like um, Audi and Auto Union and the Mercedes project that Hitler was running actually, and all um, and and all the speed tests and and that that's quite an interesting period um, that I don't really know much about. Um, who do you want at Mercedes next year? I mean, I don't really support Mercedes, so it doesn't bother me so much who they get. Although I'm hearing rumors of Vettel, and I'm like, to be honest, uh, that would be well. I, I'd love to see Vettel back, but I don't think it would work. Is the thing because that this is not the Mercedes that he was racing against, and also having had two years out of the sport, it doesn't often work to make a comeback and have it work well. Vettel coming back as a team principal, I could see that happening, or as FIA president, yeah. Uh, do you do live F1 commentary on Wasted? No, no, I, I don't do watch-alongs. Um, I don't really understand watch-alongs. Like, I would never watch a watch-along live because I'm going to want to watch the race. I'm not going to watch somebody else watching it without being able to see or hear the race. Like, I would watch... Sometimes I've watched bits of watch-alongs afterwards just to see reactions to things like... Well, Abu Dhabi 21, I watched a whole bunch of ones, watch-alongs. But no, I don't watch watch-alongs while watching the race. That's a lot of watch in one sentence. Um, who would you choose if you were Toto? Well, I would try to drag it in a more German direction. So that's where you could you could throw in Vettel. Uh, or even Hulkenberg. Maybe give him a go because he was meant to get that seat in 2013 originally before Hamilton got it. Kimi Antonelli, it's a bit early. If Kimi does well in Formula 2, it's like, why not? Let's just throw him in and see what happens instead of making him waste five years driving for Williams. Um, just try and test him. I mean, obviously, he, he's getting a bit... He, he's getting the sort of um, Emma Raducanu treatment. Everyone's hyping him up massively, and then he doesn't deliver, and then they rip him to shreds, and it destroys his mental health. That's that's big, We're seeing that happening with, with Antonelli. Mick, uh, I don't know. Online, people would love the story, but now he's driving for his dad's team and that. But Mick, I, I think, I feel like the moment has gone when it comes to Mick and Formula One. He's not his dad. He's not even his uncle. Um, he is his cousin. He's better than David, but yeah. I only use watch alongs if I want to watch the driver's perspective because the broadcast sucks. Oh, you mean like the onboards? Yeah. Well, they used to. I remember back in the day, BBC, you could you could watch watch alongs alongside the actual race, and they had the the live driver tracker, which I used once or twice, mostly to try and see where HRT were. Antonelli could become the Luke Litter of F1, or he could be a Freddie Adu type. Okay, well, I know about Luke Litter because everyone does. I've never heard of Freddie Adu, but yeah, Antonelli. Yeah, just the, there's someone. Everyone he take takes the sport by storm, and then it's wrecked. And within five years, you know, he's living on the street drinking booze because they've run out of money and everyone's like ripping into him for not being perfect all the time i don't know 
Yeah, we'll see what happened with Kimi. The, the, the hype, it's hard to say. Like, everyone, it's it's a bit more... I feel like the hype is stronger than Max because Max really just came out of nowhere at all. Like, nobody had heard of him when he got his F1 seat because he'd been racing in single seats for less than a year. Whereas Hamilton, people knew him already because he, because he'd done several years in single seaters and that. Um... What happened the last time Ray Shadow Legend sponsored you? Uh, no one liked it, so I just never got sponsored again. Not that they contacted me, but I just decided I'm not going to do this. Like, I don't... Um, well, the thing is, it's got nothing to do with F1. I mean, I do... I can't say too much, but I've got some sponsors coming up that are a bit more F1 relevant. But yeah, Ray Shadow Legends was... Uh, that had nothing to do with Formula 1. Um, and people did not like it. I, I They made me download the game and actually play some of it and i was like this is just really fucking boring um to use as footage and yeah favorite f1 pundits uh martin brundle and alex jakes and mint that's that's my comment my dream commentary box uh crofty needs to go can't stand him never like ben edwards don't like don't like someone laser me don't like david uh, don't like damon hill coolthard's good I love Nico Rosberg. He's great. Jensen Mutton's good. Don't like Naomi Schiff. Don't like um, Danica Patrick. Bernie Collins, I don't mind. Uh, Ted Kravitz is kind of annoying. Um, the Channel 4 team, it's just a bit cringe because it's just not... Well, it, I feel like it could be better if they had live races, but yeah. Do you watch on Sky or F1? Um I watch, well, I watch um, whichever coverage I can get from whichever website I'm using. That's how I'll put it. Um, yeah. Uh, Chandok's, I like Chandok. His analysis is quite good. And like, like I like that, like Martin Brundle, he's driven a lot of cars and he talks in a lot of detail about what they're like to drive. I like that, yeah. Jack Nicholas. Oh, is he that like pedo rapist one from Formula E or something? Um wasn't he the commentator or I can't remember. Um Jolly and Palmer's supposed to be good. He um I mean I've seen a little bit of his analyses. He seems to do that better than uh than driving. Um Did you like the Keanu Reeves documentary? And do you think Braun's achievement doesn't get the recognition it does in sporting history? Um, I haven't actually seen the documentary. I really, really need to watch that. Um, and um, credit history. Well, they're only around for one year. The thing is, uh, to me, like it doesn't. It didn't really shock me that they did so well at the time because I knew that they'd been working on that car's that car for months. Uh, I don't know the full story behind the finances because they collapsed, and obviously Ross Braun he bought the team for one pound. It was obviously worth a lot more than one pound. But they'd already built a really good car, but then they did have to, obviously, they had to switch out the engine at the last minute. Um, they just got lucky with the rules because there was a drop-off after that when they became Mercedes for a bit. Um, someone asked about HRT. I just like them because they're back because they're the underdog. That was the thing. They were always the worst team and Carter Kane was always the worst driver, so I just liked the underdog. And they gave it a good go. Like... The thing is, compared to some of the 90s teams, like, the cars actually worked reasonably well. That was the thing. And they're still, they still look fast. I mean, I've seen them in person because I went to Silverstone a couple of times and they still look look and sound fast. Um, will you get a green screen? I didn't think I needed one. I mean, I use this because it's a plain background, but maybe I'll get one in the future. Don't know what I'll put on it. Um... As long as it works well and not, I'm not suddenly going to start, you know, disappearing in and out of the void whenever I move. I don't know. Dawn Boss is the go. I don't watch the Dutch coverage, so I can't comment. I know that Olaf Moll, he's been he's been the main Dutch presenter for donkey's years, hasn't he? Um, and I know that Canal Plus in France, they've got Frank Montagne and they've got Nicholas something running it too. Um, I think when when in America when they had speed they had Danny Danny Sullivan was doing it for a long time wasn't he um, I'm pretty certain I know that people a lot of Americans used to hate um, speeds coverage because they put in so many um, ad breaks and the coverage would start like on the formation lap which I don't mind to be honest 
your clock being one hour off is mildly infuriating. Well, it's it's not what well it it's not one half hour for for it's not one hour off for me. It is for you, obviously, unless. No, it is. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah. I was looking at daylight savings. Yeah, obviously, you're an hour ahead, aren't you? Um. Yeah. Okay, I think I'll call it a day there because my throat's starting to go. Uh, so that was a good stream. We got through that nice and fast. A lot of people, we got up to about 150 people tuning in, so that's good because like the Google Earth streams, people like them, but they got like 50 people at the most. This is a lot more popular. Uh, the last one, the last livery stream, got like 50,000 views for some reason. When every other stream has like 2,000, it's really random. People like this stuff, obviously, uh, and obviously it's very topical with the rather sh shitey liveries that we've had recently. Um, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you so much for the the flash subscribing uh what are we up to now 20 24 25 nearly 30 subscribers in one day in one one session not bad so yeah i'll leave it there and i'll be obviously plodding on with uh, the next video whenever that's out and yeah not long till the season begins isn't it as well yeah thank you all and uh we'll see you all next time <laughs>